Okay. Thank you all for being here. Uh, presentation is called Universities and Wikimedia, Increasing Participation Through Student-Run Efforts. Before we start, let me first give a brief introduction about myself and how I got to presenting this. I'm a recent graduate of the University of Rochester in the United States, where I studied political science and music. At the University of Rochester, I was involved in various activities. I served as an elected student senator for three years and worked with many student organizations in this role. I was also one of the founders of and on the leadership of Cards Club, a student, <clears throat> a student club at the University of Rochester focused around card games. I've also been active on Wikimedia projects since 2017, where I've contributed to thousands of articles in multiple languages. I'm I have a native speaker of both English and German, and I'm also proficient in French and Chinese, and have contributed to articles in all of these languages. First, I'd like to give an overview of uh, what exactly and how can universities contribute to the Wikimedia movement. U universities are organized into these high-level constituent parts, which I've illustrated on the screen. Universities are organized into departments, which have both professors and students. University libraries serve all or some of the university. In addition, we have student organizations, which are big drivers of the sense of community on campus, provide students uh, with the sense of community, and also provide them with opportunities to pursue their interests and opportunities for leadership. There are two major resources in universities that I believe can contribute a lot to the Wikimedia movement. These are <clears throat> both university libraries and the human resource, which includes not only university faculty, but also students. Here I've highlighted the main parts of the university, which I'll be discussing today. First, I'd like to talk a bit about university libraries. University libraries are major knowledge and information centers for the universities. They hold not only the books in their collection, but also access to journal articles online that are behind paywalls. My institution, the University of Rochester, for example, has a vast rare books collection consisting of various manuscripts ranging from medieval manuscripts, papers of the founder of Rochester, New York, letters of Queen Victoria and, and Prince Albert, letters of World, I, World War I soldiers, all the way to the papers of recent Rochester elected officials, just to name a few. This illustrates the wide breadth of resources available to university libraries that they can contribute to the Wikimedia movement by bringing them online. Next, I would like to talk about uh, university students. I believe that university students are a massive untapped resource for the Wikimedia movement. The United States alone has about 15 million undergraduate students, which are shown on this graph, as well as 3 million graduate students, which are not shown on this graph in attendance per year. If just 1% of this student population in any given year were to make a contribution, and this doesn't have to be the same people every year, but can just be 1% of students every year, this would be 150,000 or more contributions, which can be expressed as article curations, images uploaded to Wikimedia Commons, and more. This illustrates how students are a massive potential resource for the Wikimedia movement to harness. It's also important to talk about uh, what are university students studying. Their academic interests are very diverse. For example, as you can see from this pie chart of bachelor's degrees by field of study in the 2021 to 2022 academic year in the United States, over 40% of students studied something other than more established topic areas such as engineering. This great diversity in academic interests and knowledge illustrates the vast amount of knowledge that students have, which further highlights how they are a massive potential resource for the Wikimedia movement to harness. I'd also like to talk about how students already have the many of the required skills to contribute. Undergraduate students already do research projects and presentations over course of their studies. For example, when I was at the University of Rochester in my second year, I did a presentation on forests in Chile. There is an article on the English Wikipedia called Forestry in Chile, but at the time I did this project, it only consisted of about one paragraph and only cited a single source, which that's not very good for finding information. However, over the course of the project, I found the lots of additional sources and information that I could have added to the article, but at the time I didn't, which I will get to why later. 
In addition, graduate students uh, have a lot of specialized knowledge in their topic, in their topic areas because they, because they gained this knowledge over the course of experiments and in the course of preparing their un undergraduate thesis. They, can e they have a wide depth of specialized knowledge in their field that they can easily add to Wikipedia articles. In addition, students are already familiar with uh, Wikipedia because many already casually browse Wikipedia and use it as a starting point for, for research projects and presentations. So they could easily make the jump to editing, but why don't they? I've illustrated here w the, what university students can add to Wikipedia projects, but the question is, what are we doing to make this a reality? Um, I'm sure many of you already know the answer to the question, are we already working to make this a reality? And the answer is both yes and no. Currently, many of the efforts the, the Wikimedia movement has pursued in order to engage universities have mainly been focused on professors. For example, in the US and Canada, there's an initiative there, the Wiki Education Foundation pursues initiatives targeting departments, professors, and database facilities. Libra libraries have hosted events that have been trained by this initiative. While I was at the University of Rochester, the University of Rochester Library held, held two library events in the four years I was there that I attended. The first event that they did was an introduction to Wikipedia editing focused around the theme of climate justice for Open Access Week. The next was a series of events in the weekly during the month of April that was bringing the material from the special collections online through Wikipedia and Wikidata. While these events were based on a good theoretical foundation, they were not very well attended and did not, last, did not result in lasting communities. So the question is then, why was this? There are many reasons why these events were not very well attended. First off, students are very busy. Over the course of their academic studies, they are often pursuing multiple undergraduate majors, and some of them are even doing undergraduate research, uh, undergraduate research thesis. And not students are busy with not, only their, with not only their academics, but also a multitude of, of student activities. There are many different activities happening across the university at the same time, as illustrated here. Returning to the forestry in, in Chile project that I described earlier, Part of the reason why I hadn't added the information to the article at the time was because I <clears throat> was because I would, uh, was busy with various other activities that I was involved in, and as a result, as a result, I didn't get to it when I thought I would. And in addition, <clears throat> the events were not very well advertised. The, event, the library events were not advertised on social media. And I only found out about the first, the first event through a screen saver on, on a computer at the, li at the library. The, the next event, though it was advertised on social media, was only advertised on a secondary account, the Rare Books and Special Collections account, and was not advertised on the main library account. The main library account obviously has a bigger following than, than the Rare Books and Special Collections account. In addition, the timing of the events was part particularly inopportune because the events were held on Wednesday evening. Now, for events like this, you're always going to have conflicts because there's a multitude of events going on at, at a university. <coughs> but because the Wednesday evening is a time when students are busy with uh, both uh, classes and other activities, the timing was particularly inopportune. In addition, during my time at the University of Rochester, as a student senator, I had the opportunity to talk to ma many students across many different class years. I found that there was very little involvement in Wikipedia on campus and little to none in the other Wikipedia projects. I believe that part of this was because of, of misconceptions that are, that are common about Wikipedia. These misconceptions were first identified in a diff post by Wikipedia of Poland that was titled, Why Don't Young People Want to Edit Wikipedia? The first of these misconceptions was a lingering sense of Wikipedia's unreliability. In school during my early, during my early years, many teachers had told me, don't use Wikipedia. The information on there can be inaccurate. 
Now, even though the sense of even though this sense is very diminished nowadays, in general, students do not. In general, students would not highlight this as a reason not to use Wikipedia, because they were taught in their early years don't use Wikipedia. The information can be inaccurate. This misconception can persist in the back of their minds. In addition, there is a strong sense that nobody knows who writes Wikipedia articles, and that there's only a one type of person who edits Wikipedia. And this, if you look around you, is not true. We all, we all know this very well. However, this means that even though students have already have the required skills, as I had mentioned earlier, they don't think that they do. Going forward, these misconceptions are still very much an issue that needs to be purposefully addressed. There are two major takeaways from my experience at the University of Rochester that I believe are important to highlight. The first thing, the first point in order to highlight is how do we improve attendance at campus library events like the ones that I attended? There are many ways we can do this. First off, these events need to be well advertised. We need to leverage the power of social media because nowadays everyone is on social media. In order to do this effectively, we need to use high visibility social media accounts that have a large following. This would include not only the main library account, but also, but also the accounts of student organizations, which I will get to later. In addition, the events need to be planned for time slots where the target audience has time, time to attend. Like I had said before, the events scheduled on Wednesday evenings did not have a lot of attendance because this is a time when there are a lot of competing activities. There are, there are many competing activities at this time, so they should be scheduled for, for different times, and perhaps the events should even be repeated if, uh, if uh, students cannot make it due to conflicts. In addition, events need to have themes. I know, for example, going back to my example with forestry in Chile, if there was an event themed around the environment that would provide the conscious push needed for me to go back to what I'd learned from this presentation and to add this information to the article. And uh, the theme, the, in order to get more participation, libraries should involve other groups that are interested in the theme. This would include not only the faculty or university departments, but also student organizations. If student organizations co-sponsor these events, the if student organizations co-sponsor these events, then their members will attend. In addition, the presence of library staff and faculty at these events can boost the level of confidence and trust that students have in Wikipedia. These are some good recommendations for how libraries can improve event attendance, but we are not all university libraries. This brings me to the next major takeaway that I would like to discuss which is a proposal for a roadmap aimed at improving university student participation rates. In order to improve the participation rates of university students, we need to actively campaign for the Wikimedia mission. Even though it's ob obvious to us that the Wikimedia movement is a movement for a better world, what's obvious to us might not be as obvious to others. Therefore, we need to actively campaign for the Wikimedia movement's mission of opening knowledge. In order to do this effectively, we need to start early. We need to start by targeting students before they enter university, such as when they are in high school. Once students enter university and once they already have a well-defined profile of the activities they, they participate in, it becomes a lot harder for them to take on new ones. So if we start early, we can boost participation by involving, we can boost participation by involving students when, when they are still forming their conception of what, of what they wish to participate in. We can do this in part by recognizing student volunteers who are early adopters. We can do this by providing them with uh, certificates for recognition and also inviting them to speak at uh, local events such as conferences. In addition, in order to boost the ethos of, of Wikimedia, we must uh, recruit sponsors at universities. This includes university librarians and university professors, but it can also include some unexpected sources like admissions officers, because the Ro University of Rochester admissions of office noticed my poster at Wikimedia 2019 and made special mention of it in my acceptance letter. 
So these sponsors can play an important role in clarifying and misconceptions about Wikipedia and strengthening the ethos of the, of Wiki, of the Wikipedia mission. In addition, once students get to university, they need to be provided guidance on how to leverage their, fu their future efforts in an organized manner so that they can continue to contribute effectively. Which brings me to my next, uh, which may, brings me to the main topic of, of this proposal, student clubs. So why student clubs? Student clubs are often small organizations which can be as big as, uh, as only 12 people. And the, these organizations, because they are smaller, have a lower activation barrier to create from scratch. University clubs create the sense of community on campus, as I had mentioned before. It's important to keep people interested, had to, keep the, to keep people interested, provide a reason to go to the next meeting. Um, clubs do and maintain interest in the club. In a, this would allow students to choose topics that they are interested in to contribute to. And in addition, clubs are supported by university resources. Clubs can reserve meeting and event spaces on campus to hold their events. Universities provide clubs funding, which can, also, which can be used for not only purchasing supplies for meetings, but also support for travel to events such as conferences. In addition, it's easier for clubs to develop meaningful meetings with a theme because students decide what they want to talk about. Students decide what they are interested in and students can uh, maintain interests better that way. Once, the, once we get a club started, it's important to maintain continuity. Student clubs can often fall apart because either the members graduate or because either the members graduate or there is no established plan for succession. In order, in order to address this, uh, clubs need to have defined plans of succession according to, according to the, the guidelines presented by their university. Once students are, invo once students are involved in, in, once students are involved in clubs, they will want to join leadership. This will allow the clubs to, uh, this will allow the clubs to continue to succeed. In addition, by choosing topics that clubs are, that the students are interested in, Clubs can continue to maintain the student interest, and uh, clubs can continue to maintain the student interest and continue to host successful events. In addition, support from library staff and professors can can also help student Wikimedia clubs succeed. In addition, another in, in addition, we can also help maintain interest in student clubs by getting members to events such as conferences like this one, for example, in order in order to maintain interest. Because uh, if all you see is, is, letter, is text on a screen, it's, it doesn't feel as real as actually meeting others. And it's important to build a sense of community not only within universities, but beyond. My experiences with uh, in the leadership of Cards Club at the University of Rochester and its success over, over the last four years have illustrated the importance of student clubs on campus and how they can, and how they can foster successful communities. I hope that I have. Uh, I hope that I have demonstrated to you that university students are a largely untapped resource for the Wikimedia movement. I've also demonstrated that university student clubs are a viable venue to establish and maintain a presence for the Wikimedia movement on campus. Going forward, organized groups within the Wikimedia community need to make more of a systematic effort to recruit and engage students at all levels. By making unrealized potential realized we can create a better future for open knowledge. Before I open the floor for questions, I'd like to make a few acknowledgments. I'd like to thank uh, my U, U of R classmate and roommate, uh, Eric Kudenberger, for, for help with initial discussions that helped form the ideas for this presentation. In addition, I'd like to thank Andrea Kingston, Wendy Way, and Laura Nikosha, the University of Rochester librarians who hosted the initial events at the University of Rochester. In addition, I'd like to thank the University of Rochester Cards Club for, such a, for ho holding successful events and helping engage the community and helping demonstrate the value of community. In addition, I'd like to thank uh, Richard Dipel of Wikimedia NYC, who is in the audience right now, for, for continued discussions that helped crystallize the final ideas of this presentation. And lastly, thank you to all of you in, in attendance for being here.
Any questions? Yes. Um, yeah, my question is, do you think the fact that, um, so I'm from France and university works uh, <laughs> differently, uh, do you think uh, that the fact that editing Wikipedia looks like um, more homework or more works can be um, a blockage or uh, um, a problem for involving more students Mm. Uh, instead of like uh, integrating Wikipedia uh, edition into the like the courses, the program mm. uh, in France, we have like um, some homeworks directly are uh, uh, submitting uh, Wikipedia articles because uh, I, uh, as a, uh, not uh, <laughs> a student, uh, not uh, far ago, um, I when I finished my uh, my day of courses, I don't want to spend more time researching. I want to do other things, hobbies, uh, video games, etc. Yes. So do you think this is uh, this can be a problem? Mm, yes, it's yes, it certainly can. In fact, I mean, this is the re this is the main reason why I'm advocating for student clubs in, in because uh, student clubs as an as extracurricular activities that drive the sense of community on campus. Uh, are a reason are a reason for students to continue to continue to participate. If the we need to emphasize more that we have a sense of community on university on on campus and if and because student clubs can can make editing a fun experience, this will make students want to continue to contribute. And to your point about uh, Wikipedia in the classroom, this is something that the Wiki Education Foundation in the United States and Canada is working on, and. The main issue I see with this is that these kinds of efforts get students to participate, get students to make edits once and then never again. They don't really create lasting community members. They don't really create lasting participation, which this is good for, in, for improving what exists. That is a valid goal and that is something that, uh, that we should pursue. However, if we want continued sustained participation, if we want to, if we want to, if we want a, a community, if we want, uh, if we want uh, people to keep coming back, then I believe that student clubs are, are a better way to proceed. Um, that does, that's not to say that the that's not to say that uh, these kinds of efforts are shouldn't be pursued or anything, because like I said, these are valid efforts. But we also need to make more of a systematic effort to help create student clubs. And I know that in some places, student clubs have been successfully established. Like there are some people from, there are some people in the audience, like uh, from Turkey, who have, who have uh, successfully done this. So the question is, why aren't we doing this in more places? Okay. Yes. So I'm gonna be one of those classic people who do a comment rather than a question. Okay. Um, just letting you know, we do, I've been trying to engage with quite a few people, well, students at um, Wellington in New Zealand um, through the university there uh, via my daughter who used to go to that university. She started a club and it takes quite a bit of uh, administrative um, get up and go to actually get students to create their own club for this. So one way I'm trying to sidestep this when you don't have an editor base actually at a university that I'm aware of is to hold events which um, hopefully enthuse students, specifically invite them and hold it at a time in the semester schedule, timing it so that they don't have too many commitments like early or late in the year after exams or before exams before assignments before the year starts really ramping up in order to get them and train them and hopefully find yes. that person who's enthusiastic who can then go ahead and create a club yes so it's like there's this this work that needs to be done prior to the actual club formation in my yes opinion. Yeah. And to that point, yes, something that I've often said with many efforts in the Wikimedia community is that often one of the most difficult barriers to overcome is the initial activation energy. Yeah. 
And this is why I talked about both what can library events do to succeed and eventually providing a roadmap for engaging more students. Because like you said, it is important to start early. Like early in the semester is still a time when student clubs can, is still a time when student clubs can, can get new members, can advertise to new members effectively. For example, one of the things, for example, one of the things that uh, clubs do at University of Rochester is that they have an annual club fair at the start of both semesters, yeah. which they, which they can use to advertise to people. Yeah. And often I've noticed that uh, the new members joining a club are mostly, are mostly going to be first year students who have not yet, uh, who have not yet established what they want to do. And this is the main audience that would need that would need to be engaged in order to in order to be able to form more clubs. Yeah. Not to say that not to say that those are the only people that would be interested, but those would be the easiest to engage. Yeah. And uh, and in addition, this also goes back to why the library events at the University of Rochester didn't succeed as well because. They because they were also they were scheduled at inopportune times, which included not only an inopportune time of day, but also an inopportune time of the year because they were mid semester. If you remember, the rare book series was in April. So, so thank you for a great presentation. You're welcome. Yes. Uh, OK. Um, uh, I've noticed that during this presentation, you specifically focused on uh, Wikipedia editing and, you know, introducing people to Wikipedia specifically. Mm -hmm. But do you think uh, it could be worthwhile to place more focus on other uh, Wikimedia-related projects, such as Wikisource, Wikiquote, uh, oh, et cetera? Mm, yes, def yes, that definitely could be. That definitely is, a, is also a valid way. The reason I focused on Wikipedia was because this is what people are familiar with. More people know about Wikipedia than the sister projects because, as I described, there was little to no involvement in in like in the other projects at all. Even though, so even though, people could easily make good contributions there as well. Something that I've seen discussed often at this conference is uh, engaging people through having them upload images to Wikimedia Commons. Which, yes, this is also a good way too. I did. I did try to. Uh, I did try to get people interested in commons as well by trying to get people to participate in in Wiki Loves Monuments. But there was in October. But there was never any interest in in doing this. Uh, okay. Uh, thanks. Yes. Sorry, I think we're out of time now. Okay. No problem. All right. Thank you. Thank you all for being here and.